sharp and uh, you know that c sharp and that net are usually tied together uh, but uh, i'll take into the limelight the language specifically uh, of course a few points were um, put on .NET, but the main focus in, is on the language and the question you see on this first slide is a question we usually have in uh, discussions uh, with my best friend and colleague uh, when we are talking about the updates uh, in the platform in the language and so on and uh, this question I'd like to uh, well dissect, uh, discuss today with you, and probably uh, ask you to think about it. So uh, today agenda is like this, but nothing special. Let's move on. And here, what is the sharp in common perception? Uh, Fifty years ago, when I started my career with uh, .NET. Uh, I had uh, everything mentioned on the slide. Uh, I have read it. it uh, had read it. It internet and uh, funny enough, that's uh, it is uh, in the same way. At least it looks for me now. So, fifteen years, nothing changed. It's still Microsoft. Uh, so something forged in Microsoft for Microsoft uh it's op definitely it's not a system language um despite microsoft says other things but um on the slide i don't know any root um component of operating uh, operation uh, operative system or any hardware driver or any triple a uh, game written on c sharp yeah it's managed memory uh we all love it or we all hate it uh the garbage collector and uh, the main point is that it looks like that language growth is stuck somewhere. For me, uh, for my perception, it was in a sync await invention. And then all other things uh, looks like a part of runtime. This .NET uh, common language runtime or and uh, <laughs> base class library. Uh, so uh, all other things seems to be just a syntactic sugar and nothing well special. Good. Uh, so, by the way, if you have any objections or comments or uh, anything you'd like to share, uh, please interrupt me if you feel that it's the right time or we could discuss it uh, during the questions session. Uh, so that was and that is common perception. And um, I have a lot of technical interviews performed and looks like uh, it's still present. So uh, you see, uh, I usually ask this question, uh, is anything fresh? And people name different things, but uh, they usually uh, are not impressed with it. Some niche features, some uh, not really uh, interesting things like records, at least not interesting for them. Pattern margin, yeah, but, uh, and uh, top level statements, mm. <laughs> uh, especially in uh, enterprise um, applications, uh, probably not the best thing. Uh, so you see, uh, for me, this kind of 50 years ago for newbies, it's still old and uh, looks like nothing has changed. And is there any problem with it? And it's usually to uh, check what the problem we might have, we could check the history. So if you have 30 seconds or a minute, at least uh, we could dive into history. And uh, yes, because you know, history is repeating itself. And uh, yeah, a long time ago, oh, maybe it's wrong history. Okay, uh, more than 50 years ago, uh, Dennis Ritchie has invented our uh, C language. And uh, it's to uh, maybe, uh sharp words because he hasn't invented it he just changed the uh, predecessor b language but added uh into the c language uh the um, interesting thing uh, types so uh, here we have uh chars ints and arrays as we know them now and uh 
that was good language, uh, no objections. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the concept of object-oriented programming had been being uh, floated um, in uh, uh, software uh, for maybe a decade or two. Uh, so uh, a few la years later, uh, Bjarni Straustrup has started to work with better version of C, C with classes. So C with object-oriented programming. And uh, you know, this language now is named as C++ and it uh, has first appeared in 82. Then <clears throat> if I remember correctly, a language reference was issued in 85. Uh, and that was good. And uh, the good part of that language in addition to OP, was that it hadn't changed uh, a lot uh, compared to the single language. So uh, if you have any old code written in C, you could port it uh, almost easily to C++. Of course, you have to change a few things, but uh, it wasn't a hard um, task. Unfortunately, uh, you have old habits. And so uh, if you're a prog developer in C and you uh, have switched to C++, you probably were continuing writing in SC. And even the term C style, C++, was invented at that time. And uh, I've seen this term uh, <clears throat> when I've learned C++, uh, long time ago <laughs> and uh, I've checked the internet and it's still present. Uh, so you see, the problem is that uh, you have new language, you have new possibilities, new benefits, but you are not using them because you are um, this have this habit of old uh, C style. Okay, that was a history. Then a uh, few more years uh, passed. Uh, new languages appeared, but they are not started with C. That's why I'm not mentioning them. And then at the end of uh, previous millennium, uh, Anders Helzberg started with a really cool language. Literally cool, because it was C-like object-oriented language. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, name... Uh, maybe not was good from marketing perspective. And that's why uh, it was changed to C-sharp. Yeah, that C-sharp we are writing on right now. Uh, the name was uh, had appeared in 2000, but uh, the uh, version one release uh, uh, had appeared in 2022. So more than 20 years passed. Today is 2024. Uh, we still have C-sharp. Uh, do you think, was anything changed in that language? Definitely yes. But uh, do you think, uh, don't we have this bad habit already uh, mentioned for the C and C++ uh, format for the C-sharp, when you use uh, the legacy features of uh, C-sharp in a modern one, and thus not using all benefits. And yeah, I'm talking about old, new versions. Let's check what we have in versions. Yeah, slide with a lot of text. Don't read it. <laughs> uh, it's just everything taken from the... Um, Microsoft uh, documentation, so that's a better source of uh, knowledge, definitely. Uh, I just want to show you that uh, we have constant changes <clears throat> and uh, constantly we have something new. Uh, so let's discuss uh, why it is changed. And yeah, we have some language design principles. Uh, you remember I mentioned part of them in a C sharp uh, common perception, so simplicity. That's why we probably started to learn C-sharp and why we probably love it, because it's simple. Uh, then a lot of uh, compile time checks. Uh, you don't need to write a unit test or uh, perform a manual test if compiler could test it uh, during uh, your um, code writing. So strong type system, array bounds checking, and so on and so forth. 
OP, definitely. Source code portability. Uh, it says that you could take your source code, not the binary file, but uh, uh, source code and run it on any platform. Yeah, internalization hosted and embedded usage. Uh, well, all these points uh, are taken from the, uh, again, Microsoft documentation. You see the link uh, at the bottom of this of the page. Uh, and one other thing was added by me is backward compatibility. Uh, funny enough that it's not mentioned uh, in the documentation, but I remember times when uh, Microsoft has changed functionality for closed um, variables in for each uh, loop, and it was everywhere. It was like, uh, we are so sorry that we have to change it, please. Uh, don't worry, we believe that it's not a big break in change, but uh, please check your code and so on and so forth. So backward compatibility is a big part of uh, the uh, language design. It was from the beginning. Is it now uh, after 20 plus years of history? Well, they changed. Uh, again, please uh, take into account that uh, everything you see here is taken from the fresh Microsoft documentation. So nothing is changed, right? Uh, I wish so. Uh, on the left side, you see uh, marks where it was changed or not, or I don't know. And I won't uh, dive deep into the um, explanation on this slide, but I will try to uh, touch probably most of uh, bullets that I end up uh, during the next presentation. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, as we see these design principles, let's try to check the syntactic sugar. I mentioned it for a few uh, times during the presentation, what it is. And uh, to check it, I'll uh, use the interesting tool. I hope you see my web browser now. Uh, yeah. So it's sharplab.io. Uh, you could get the same experience if you, are, if you have a writer. Uh, I hadn't tried to find any good extension for the Visual Studio I have on my machine. Uh, so uh, if you have anything, please share, uh, I would be thankful. So uh, on the left side, uh, that's uh, C Sharp and you could uh, change the language or change the platform. And uh, you could also experiment with different uh, languages, different features and so on. But nothing special, just uh, x64. And on the right side, we have results in uh, different uh, format. And IL is probably a bit complex, uh, almost assembler, right? Some jumps, some load. No, uh, I won't bother you with all these things. Yeah, let's check the C sharp the real C sharp we have uh, before the compilation. So you see, uh, on the left side, there are two switch, uh, switch statements, not the operators. Uh, and it's kind of approach to work, uh, well, to parse uh, Roman uh, numbers into just a text. Uh, so uh, one thing you have, and I also want to show for this uh, side that uh, you see it has full integration with uh, uh, your experience in IDE. It shows errors, shows some suggestions. Uh, okay, I'll remove this. Ah, and yeah, switch is uh, strictly wanting uh, compiler time constants uh, for its case. That's one thing I want to show you, but it's probably related to other talk. And yeah, what if we have uh, two switches that uh, does the same thing, uh, just um, parse input and uh, return it and do nothing more. Under the hood, we have a set of ifs. So, and moreover, you see that this set of use is uh, same for both variants. 
either for immediate return or for later return, um, it is still optimizing, <laughs> uh, kind of optimizing because uh, this unused uh, variable is still present. Uh, if the variable is present, uh, it is even more funny because instead of set of ifs, we have set of ternary operators, but no switch. And uh, switch is present in uh, C-sharp from the very beginning. And from the very beginning, they've decided to uh, not have it in the uh, C-sharp, to have it in the language you write, but not the language you get. Okay, let's try some more complicated things. Uh, this time, switch operator. And yeah, the same behavior for uh, constant values, you see. So let's check what we have for case of immediate return from the switch or uh, for return uh, result of switch operator. Uh, unbelievably the same set of ifs, nothing special. And if I check uh, this um, switch operator using the uh, local variable, the same thing, even uh, better optimization that nothing is done, uh, no new local variable is uh, created. Um, if I try to change it, of course it is created and again, same ternary things. So you see adding switch operator was a pretty easy task, probably. Let's check the switch operator further. And this time, um, more interesting thing is uh, pattern matching. You probably had a lot of about it. And uh, I just want to show you how you could uh, work with it. And yeah, again, a reference implementation, set of ifs, and some other implementation, another set of ifs. Uh, maybe more complicated, but still. And here you see, as um, uh, left-hand uh, argument of switch operator is string, we could treat it as a collection of characters, and thus we could um, uh, try to read this collection, and one case could be a single element collection, one element should be either lower or upper case y. Uh, you could write this way. And pay attention that OR is uh, not um, to pipes, uh, logical operator, but different OR operator for use it for pattern matching. Then for case of more elements in collection, we could check the first or either element and have a rest. And additionally, as we are trying to check for two, case, uh, additional, the length could be checked and uh, again, see that uh, input variables could be uh, captured as additional um, variable, A, this time. And you could constrain it with using one um, word. So uh, we have and, war, and uh, var, and one in this construction. Or even we could use uh, object deconstruction and just check the property that it has to be three for three. And yeah, I know that this code is not um, uh, bulletproof, uh, but uh, it's just to show you the um, uh, functionality of pattern matching. So if you check the right side, just if, just uh, simple check for, uh, is the first character, is this one or that one? And uh, if not length is one, uh, like this way we could uh, distinguish two other cases using these ifs. Okay, uh, more pattern matching or kind of it uh, in the, in this, um, method is signed integral, you see that we could use OR to uh, combine types. Uh, it is, of course, not a, um, uh, arithmetic type like in TypeScript, but it's only for pattern matching. 
unfortunately. But in real code, it is like a combination of logical uh, ORs and uh, is operators. And moreover, probably you don't remember, but yeah, you could introduce um, new variables as a part of the uh, expression and use it later in the same expression. So results is not something uh, out of scope. It is only in scope of this expression. Uh, that's one way to work with uh, new variables, but there is even more interesting thing. So we have a record and I'll skip all this record part. Uh, I'll return to back to it, but uh, this method is interesting. So uh, please pay attention. We have this interesting warden and uh, you could use it. It's not a magic. It's not something that is innate to Sharplab IO. You could write it in your own code. Of course, if you have uh, the near to last version of <laughs> .NET used. Uh, so you could deconstruct the point, uh, this X and Y uh, properties, check them and also additionally check any other properties or methods uh, you have. Uh, and yeah, internally it's nothing special, just like this, deconstruct, check, and then check the property. Again, that was about syntactic sugar pattern matching, but also we see here another uh, interesting um, part of syntactic sugar, the records. And yeah, uh, you see from the scroll how many things we have, uh, some backend fields uh, for X and Y and some equality things like equality contract. Uh, I'll skip this X and Y after generated. Uh, constructor um, to string and uh, uh, it was interesting that this to string could be uh, sealed. Uh, then again, equality operators get hash code equals uh, clone, a uh, lot of things, uh, and also deconstruct. So everything is generated for you, but you need to write nothing here. Another example uh, of um, syntactic sugar is more interesting uh, thing related to compile time checks. So uh, let's start analyzing this example. We have some struct uh, vector uh, of uh, two coordinates, X and Y. Uh, we have squared lengths, uh, uh, nothing special, just sum of squares. And pay attention that another property uh, is uh, marked with red only. So th this is the only difference for, for these two properties. And then to use this vector, uh, we could have uh, two methods and I'll scroll to them uh, at the bottom. And you see that they are really different. Uh, so um, for the not read only version, we have a lot of extra operations performed. Uh, value of input parameter is copied once. And yeah, it is copied because it is a struct. It's not a reference type. Then it is copied second time. And all this is done uh, to use vector length squared um, on the copy, because we are not sure if uh, this um, property is not modifying anything under the hood. And that's why we don't want to break the input value. Instead, we're working on copies. And all this done because uh, the in uh, modifier was mentioned here. If I remove it, you see that simple, pretty easy, but it's not some, something we'd like to have. Oops, All the wrong language. Uh, yeah, so compiler makes a lot of effort to protect us from um, unexpected modifier because we asked him using this in. And uh, at the same time, we know that property is not modifying the X or Y uh, underneath. 
it's just take them and that's it. Uh, this why read only could assure the compiler that nothing is modified. And in this way, we have the simple uh, result. Uh, you see, is it syntactic sugar only? Maybe yes, because uh, it's something we write and then compiler uh, do uh, their own stuff uh, while adding more code, like it was uh, uh, added there. Uh, but uh, I can't name it syntactic sugar. And the last but not least, yeah, async await. Uh, you've seen it, uh, of course, in a lot of presentation. I just want to barely touch it. Uh, so uh, there are two uh, public methods. There is one um, private method postponed that just return a task and uh, two methods two approaches to uh, use that postponed task. One is pretty transparent, so you just call it and get result uh, uh, resulting task. And the other is async await. Please check the code. Uh, sorry for bothering you with all this, but I see this problem again and again. People, instead of using this simple approach, they just need the task. They don't need any more things. They're using this approach. Uh, and yeah, in code, it's uh, just simple adding a sync await and nothing more. Uh, underneath, you have uh, some strange things going in the method. New class created. That class is created for each asynchronous method. It's not the standard one, so you can't reuse it. Uh, some uh, weird things are going in a move next. Uh, so yes, it's still compiler uh, syntactic sugar, but uh, probably uh, there is more in it. And by the way, pay attention uh, to, uh, well, uh, this attribute and this builder. Uh, if you like uh, to check that slide with changes in different C-sharp versions they are mentioned there. Okay, that was uh, all about uh, syntactic sugar I'd like to show you, uh, but uh, probably this was, well, my intention was to show you that uh, everything is syntactic sugar in a compiler and uh, not everything is really easier and light and uh, something you could uh, ignore. So uh, syntactic sugar is not as bad as you think. But OK, um, changes. We are talking about them. Why they are done? Uh, well, obviously, three things. You could improve your code in comfort. So you write less code, but get better uh, uh, more functionality. You could have these compile time checks. I already mentioned them, uh, and they could even be improved. Like uh, it was at uh, in and uh, read only um, example. And performance, it's well really important. Uh, we think, uh, especially when uh, working in enterprise scale applications. Uh, and taking all these traffic light colors into mind. I've tried to color the previous slide you've seen. And uh, the key uh, thing you should take from it that in every version, both three um, uh, types of changes were done, both comfort, both uh, stricter checking, checks and performance. Uh, and yeah, I mentioned performance for a few time. I have to mention it in this presentation, though it's probably not related to C-sharp, but uh, currently performance uh, is growing in next uh, three direction. First of all, it's ahead of time compilation. Uh, as you remember, uh, C-sharp is compiled to intermediate language or bytecode. And uh, during the build, uh, the machine code is not created, but machine code is created when you run the application using just-in-time compiler. 
Uh, and as you could run applications on different platform, you the just-in-time compiler uh, performs uh, this optimization per platform when it is run. Ahead of time, move the compilation to the build time. So you build per specific platform and uh, get all benefits I'll discuss later. Uh, a good example, or maybe funny example of AOT uh, is on this link from Nick Chopsas, uh, the smallest C sharp game. If I remember, it's like uh, uh, maze game in two kilobytes of executable. Then uh, the other direction are hardware intrinsics. So uh, uh, the way to explore uh, your CPU instructions more heavily. Uh, good examples could be taken from .NET runtime. Uh, you could check the link. I'll not stop. Uh, on it right now. Uh, I believe we have a lack of time. And the set point is, uh, oh, oh, sorry, R refs and spans. It's a C sharp way to have managed pointers. Uh, yes, that pretty uh, old char asterisk, int asterisk, or int ptr, uh, as you remember them from unsafe. C sharp context, or if you remember them from the uh, C++, but this time managed. You don't need unsafe, you don't need um, uh, lose any uh, compile time checks, uh, you just have the benefits. And uh, if you like, I could share it later, but here's an example I've uh, tried to <clears throat> use uh, usual parse and uh, for the input strings and parse span, and I have almost two times in performance, uh, in CPU time, and also a better allocation. Uh, you see uh, generation zero, generation fast, and totally allocated uh, bytes. Okay, uh, so please take these three points into account and uh, short, um, discussion about first point ahead of time uh, compiling. As I mentioned, it is compiled during the build for the specific platform. As a result, you don't need the DLLs from the .NET platform because DLLs from the .NET platform, they contain the intermediate language code, but you are already compiling them and uh, thus you could uh, have the better performance, not only for your code, but also for the .NET platform. Moreover, you could remove not used code. Uh, it's called tree shaken. You all know uh, this from <laughs> JavaScript or other compilers. Yeah, we also have it here. So um, uh, more about this on the previously mentioned um, videos, but uh, we have the blocker. Uh, IoT can't be done if any reflection is used in your code. And probably not your code, but uh, code of libraries you are using. Um, uh, it's not uh, now, as I know for the most libraries, but uh, recently, mappers uh, or AMs, they are mappers as well, uh, were using reflection to <clears throat> work with your code. and as a reflection needs information about times, about types, and this information is stored on the level of intermediate code, uh, intermediate language code that we lose during the compilation. Uh, that's why reflection just couldn't work. And uh, one of suggested workarounds is compiled time code generation. It could be used not only together with IoT, but it's a pretty cool feature when you'd like to have uh, better performance uh, and most of mappers are moving to these rails right now. So uh, that was all about performance, uh, but returning back to the changes, are there any limits for changes? So, you know, uh, Probably you are uh, 
looking for other languages, uh, you are checking what they have, and you want to have the same precious things like maybe more functional programming, like better um, type system, TypeScript, Haskell, Idris. Why don't we have this in our Lava C Sharp? Borrow checker like it is in uh, Rust. Uh, you know that this uh, guy, this borrow checker improves a uh, lot of things related to the concurrency and uh, memory management. It is done in Rust. We have another approach to memory management, but at least, at least concurrency could be improved. Then another point for concurrency is coroutines and green threads, uh, like in Go, Java, and uh, probably more languages. Um, any your point? Uh, we kind of could have these features, but yeah, there is also some but. First of all, you remember that uh, C Sharp is OP, so everything is a class. And uh, taking functional programming into account when, when we want to have lightweight types or lightweight functions out of the specific type or specific class, it's not possible. You remember um, uh, that code from Lab IO, every time you need extra functionality, right? like for records, like for async await, a new class appears. So there is no other way than to introduce a class. Also, any of these changes requires, uh, I mean, changes in uh, c -sharp requires changing in existing code. And uh, part of this existing code, runtime and PCL are under uh, control of Microsoft and they, definitely could bite a bullet and uh, introduce them sooner or later. But a lot of uh, these changes should be done in your code. And it's legacy, and we all know this uh, problem. Uh, you have to have this backward compatibility because uh, otherwise all your clients would be unhappy when you just uh, take the new version of language and it even doesn't compile. Or the worse, uh, way it compiles, but works in not expected way. So uh, does it mean that uh, no changes could be possible? Of course, no. We have breaking changes in .NET. First of all, this well-known story of moving from, I mean, <laughs> cutting framework from .NET framework, uh, moving from framework to core and then to just um, naked <laughs> .NET. I could name it. Uh, then there are a few <clears throat> uh, sources on uh, learn, learn Microsoft site uh, regarding C# -sharp compiler breaking changes and breaking changes in .NET. And uh, please. Uh, put your attention while analyzing these two, when they started. Uh, almost all of them, of course, not there were changes before, but more of them were started after introduction of Roslyn. And uh, looks like the time uh, they redecided their design principles and uh, think that it's impossible to evolve the language without doing the breaking changes. Uh, also, if you'd like to peep into the discussions uh, regarding these changes, you could uh, look behind the content, curtains. Uh, that's um, follow ups after design meetings. Uh, C Sharp language team uh, is performed. Uh, it is stored for a long period. It's really interesting. And again, I, we were talking about, uh, on last slide, about coroutines and grid threads. It's something related to performance. It's something interesting. That's why there is this async to experiment and uh, it's a way to change async await to uh, provide it another flavor. And interestingly enough that it's not the first experiment. It was one before. And this one uh, looks more promising uh, right now, but 
it's still uh, not ready. You could uh, check the forked repo, the GitHub issue, or uh, again, design discussions uh, for this one. And using the links inside, you could check also the previous one. Uh, if you are into um, performance, uh, why it is important? Um, well, it's really interesting reading. So, uh, Short summary, we have breaking changes and there would be more uh, and please be prepared for them. Uh, yeah, and uh, near to last slide, uh, if you could, if you can take only one slide from the presentation, please take this one. And please check uh, some kind of new features you have, like records, local functions, the constructors. Uh, of course, they are not silver bullet. Uh, of course, uh, they wouldn't uh, improve your whole application code, but um, please use them because uh, otherwise, uh, on during the evaluation, uh, I would hear again and again that we know them, but we'd never use them. Then if you are more into the performance, uh, spans, take a look, ref, uh, and related things, uh, they're cool. They are not hard, uh, but uh, they could be used. Uh, uh, of course, uh, please use your benchmark to understand if a uh, specific part of code needed, but uh, pay attention. Uh, more trickier or less trickier, depends on you, are code generation and IoT. And uh, having the uh, loss of cross-platformity uh, using the Docker container, like we have now, uh, IoT comes more and more interesting uh, even for such cross-platform uh, language as C-sharp. And last but not least, uh, someone could say that this is old. <laughs> Why I'm uh, mentioning them here, these extension methods and link you. Believe me, I'm uh, looking through a lot of uh, pull requests and looks like people either don't like them or don't know them or don't use them. Uh, please take another look for them. So uh, that's something I'd like to share with you. Uh, and remember that initial slide about common perception of C-sharp. Uh, in red, you see uh, what I'd like to change. So first of all, C-sharp is changing. It's not stuck. Uh, there are a lot of new things. As a result, it's not simple. Yeah, it's simple for start. You could have a subset of simple things, but uh, sooner or later, you will dive into more complex and complex uh, code. Yeah, it's still OP and so on. I wouldn't uh, stop on this one. Uh, backward compatible. Yeah, you know, this legal contracts, there is small asterisk and <laughs> it's not backward compatible. And uh, it competes with in performance. Uh, funny enough that uh, they have this... Uh, that is not competing in design language design principles, but a lot of uh, change notes I've seen from the Microsoft um, workers uh, mentioned that we are faster, we are better, we sometimes even better than not only Rust, but uh, or not only C++, but uh, as Rust. So I don't know who is uh, on top in performance right now, but uh, it is competing. Uh, so that's summary for this lecture, and uh, thank you all for your attention, uh, and it's question session. So here is my question to you. Uh, I hope that I convinced you to check C Sharp, at least some parts of it, and uh, please share your questions.